A very good afternoon to one and all present here. I'm Pavni Priya from Vignan Foundation for Science, Technology and Research. I welcome you all to the webarian, Reframing Stress and Anxiety. It's a known fact that nowadays one must have conscious about the mental health as much as their physical health. And anxiety is an emotion characterized by feelings, tension, worry, thoughts and physical changes. 2020 has definitely been a challenging year. Vignan's University has doing uh, its best in handling out the best to the students through online classes and course material. Despite all these things, it's not a hidden fact that this year has affected students in its own way. In a student's life, these two factors affect a lot in pretty much all areas of individual well-being, including sleep, diet, mental and physical health, self-esteem, social interaction, academic performance, and whatnot. One must be aware of these factors, keeping these situations in mind. Uh, Vignan's University has established a Student Council Center, SCC, in association with Department of Science and Humanities and Office of Dean Student Advice. Here, every individual is taking care of extremely well and conducting seminars, counseling hours, and special attention towards hostels. With this begin just the beginning, we'll now further listen to a talk by Satish Ms. Samyukta Annam Raju, counseling psychiatrist and the founder of the Mind Tab Hyderabad. I now request you all to sit side and side. The most of the today's session, I now call upon this SCC BFSPR Ms. Shabina Azmin Sheikh to speak few words. Ma'am, please. Thank you. See, there is a saying that you cannot always control what goes on outside, but you can always control what goes on inside. Stress is an irritating condition where excess of work and overload, which reduces the concentration and the normal working condition of any person. Students are the most frequently affected by stress due to their academic life. As a campus psychologist working in this institution, I have had an opportunity to meet and interact with many of you like who have full of aspirations to lead long and successful life. But I also understand a student's life is subjected to different kind of stresses such as uh, pressure of academics with an obligation of success, uncertain future and difficulties for, in, in, for integration into the system. These students face social, emotional, physical and family problems which may affect their learning ability and academic performance. So friends, it is important to keep our mind always harmonious to lead a happy and meaningful life. So today we have an eminent psychologist, Ms. Samyukta Annam Raju, who is a renowned exper expert in student counseling. On behalf of Student Counseling Center, Department of Science and Humanities and Office of Dean Student Affairs, we, we are hosting this event for students, scholars, faculty on a pertinent topic, befriending stress and anxiety. This will help in understanding the symptoms, sources, and effects of stress among the student community and others. Let us initiating the proceedings by first inviting Professor and Dean Student Affairs, Dr. MSS Rukmini, to welcome the chief guest and make the opening remarks on the significant celebration of International Stress Awareness Day in our campus. Dr. MSS Rukmini, as a Dean Student Affairs, looks after all the welfare activities of 7,000 students, which indicates national and international students. I now request Dr. MSS Rukmini to proceed further. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shabana, and uh, welcome, uh, dear uh, Samyukta ma'am, to our Vigyan University uh, family. And uh, I thank all the students, faculty, parents, and uh, uh, deans and HODs uh, for this uh, very good session. And uh, we know that the, currently the stress is uh, ruling the total world. So irrespective of the age factor, uh, this is totally uh, disturbing uh, sometimes, uh, not all the time. But uh, what are the, uh, according to me, the main causes of this distress may be in the form of money, health conditions, or family relations, as or the overwork load. So this may be common to uh, even and to the students or any type of uh, human. So on this auspicious day, uh, I think uh, this is a very right time uh, for our university to take a forward step 
to give a uh, very good advice uh, from uh, mr samyukta ma'am and uh, get the uh, inputs and uh, come out of this uh, type of uh, to turn their uh, stress into a positive stress and uh, be successful in life uh, because it has a several uh, several effects on the health uh, so that uh, whenever it uh, lead to the uh, top level of uh, high stress so that we will take bad decisions so that's why uh, i request uh, samyukta ma'am to give very valuable suggestions which are suitable for different age group of people who are uh, very eager to listen to you uh, here uh, thank you and uh, uh, welcome once again to vidyan university thank you ma'am um, i would also like to thank rukmini ma'am shabana ma'am and raghav sir for this lovely opportunity um, to extend the knowledge that i have gained through my education and so um, we are first going to talk about what exactly is stress and anxiety and um, how does it look like for students and of course stress is different for each person no two people stress looks alike right so uh, given that i i kind of would try to cover the overarching meaning of what stress is and how stress might look like for you all for students um then i have an extremely interesting tool which is called the magic wand and the dial um and uh, these i'm going to talk a little about how these tools can help you deal with your stress and anxiety so make sure you pay attention to that part then we will take a peek into what happens in our brains when we experience stress or anxiety and um you know i have put up some fun characters uh for you all to kind of understand what happens in our brains and those fun characters are going to be explaining to you what happens okay then we have the 100 dollar question of but how on earth do i manage these difficult emotions how on earth do i manage my stress and anxiety so there i'm going to tell you something that i'm pretty sure that no one has ever told you before okay so what causes stress so there are external stressors and then there are internal stressors so external stressors could be things like um your exams uh, your career decisions that you might have to take your current financial situation or even if you are in toxic relationships and by toxic relationships i mean relationships that are not respecting you um that are not giving you the space for you to be who you want to be um and relationships that are simply exhausting and draining you so that can be a major source of stress then there can be critical people around you who are also causing you a lot of stress um move on to internal stressors so these could be negative thinking patterns such as i will not be able to do this i will never be able to cope with the situation which relates to the issue of having low self esteem uh, where you start personalizing everything and you're like um you know things are not happening things are not good because i am not good right i'm not good enough so those kind of thinking of those that kind of self blame happens um so your thoughts might be like i do not have what it takes to do well in life or even uh, thoughts like i'm not worthy of love and especially this last one i'm not worthy of love is such a difficult thought to hold on to um and a lot of people feel that way unfortunately and um it usually uh, comes up or that thought kind of comes up because you probably grew up in a family that um where, where you might not have received um okay so if i give you a magical wand and told you that all your difficult emotions would go away if you use it um uh, if you give it a go and you would be extremely happy and elated um if if you if you use that magical wand so um the idea is that a lot of people come to me saying i want to get rid of my anxiety i want to get rid of my emotions i want to get rid of my depression um so a lot of people come to me talking about uh, asking me to uh, help them get rid of their anxiety to get uh, to help them get rid of their depression um but i kind of encourage them to take a closer look at um what their emotions are doing for them right so let's say for example you have your um anxiety your anxiety is uh, is telling you some wonderful and beautiful things about you um, as a person so you know um if if um 
it, your anxiety is basically saying, I want to do great things in life and um, I have high standards for myself, which is why I'm feeling anxious. Let, let's let's face it, it's, it's, uh, it's tough to deal with these emotions and if they're too much, it can feel very overwhelming. So it is important to dial it down, but maybe not to completely get rid of them, right? Okay. Um, so before I talk about how to manage these difficult emotions, I would like to um, talk to you about what happens in your brain when you face these difficult emotions, right? Okay, so we have some interesting characters here for you to explain what happens in the brain when you're stressed. So let's say there are two floors in your brain, right? The upper floor and the bottom floor. So on the upper floor, you have all these cool tools like problem solving, creativity, being calm. Um, and on the bottom floor, you have frightened, you have alert, and you have bossy. So let us say a tiger comes into your room right now. Um, what happens is your top floor literally flips off right? Um, and your bottom floor becomes active. So frightened gets frightened and alert kind of alerts the entire system. And then uh, bossy has only three things to say right now. It says, let us fight, let us flight, which is basically run away, or the whole nervous system kind of hangs and you freeze. Um, so if there's a trigger, maybe not a tiger per se, but um, maybe there's a trigger of something like you not completing your assignment or you not utilizing your time well. It, it has become more so fashionable right now to constantly do something with your time. Otherwise, you're considered useless, anxious. And uh, when it does, you know, all these cool tools such as problem solving, creativity, being calm, kind of go for a toss, then the real question becomes, um, you know, how can we put the top floor back on so that we can start using all these tools, right? So how do we manage um, these difficult emotions? So this is where I'm going to tell you something that someone has probably never told you. Um, make space for your emotions. Okay, so let us look at what can we do in the moment uh, to, to manage your difficult emotions. Let's say you're triggered by an exam uh, or the thought of an exam or you're triggered by, you know, maybe a conflict in your house or something that happens in college. So what can you do when your emotions are so intense, right? And your body is taking the brunt of it. Your body is feeling very, uh, uh, your, your body is feeling the pain, right? So what can you do then? Um, so an, an activity that you could do um, after the session is make two columns and write down, um, you know, write down these harsh thoughts. Thoughts. So um, actually, Buddha was the one that uh, came up with this, and he said that the way you think influences the way you feel. So Albert Ellis, who is um, in that, you know. Uh, so you're now making space for your emotions and you're making, you're telling yourself that is that it's okay to feel anxious. So, um, and then you're observing your critical voice and um, you are replacing it with a more compassionate one as a person. And then you're able to create that healthy cycle of, um, of, of completing tasks and feeling more confident. So let's dive into uh, see how can you cope with COVID? I, I, I see that, you know, um, this is a question for a lot of people. So um, yeah, how do you cope with COVID? So first of all, I wanna say that all your emotions, everything you are feeling right now, uh, actually before, or, or before COVID or during COVID or after COVID are extremely valid, right? Don't let anyone invalidate your feelings. No matter what you are going through, remember that you're not alone. So um, if you ask me that question, any time is a good time to ask for help, right? Um, I would say do not wait things to snowball. Do not wait for you to feel um, at the very end of the, uh, at the very bottom of the ocean. It is, right? Okay, so um, we've pretty much come to the end. I would like to end it with a, a quote and then I can share some resources with you. So this is one of my favorite quotes. It says that, um, it's from Carl Rogers. It says that the curious paradox is that when I accept myself just as I am, um, this is for people who are experiencing panic attacks or any intense anxiety. This, I, I hope it has been really, really helpful for you. And
and um, I just want to mention that you can always reach out to me um, if you have any questions. And right now, also we can we can definitely take in some questions. And I'll I'll stop sharing my screen. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we have collected some questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, how should we overcome uh, stress during exams now? Okay, uh, so I think it has, um, if you go back to the PPT and look at it, it definitely has um, a lot of tips in that. But um, like I said, right, exams, so it, it depends on the way you're looking at exams. For some people, exams is kind of make or break, or it's, it's telling them the automatically going into that thought pattern of, um, you know, if I don't do well in this exam, I'm going to be a loser, I, I won't be worth it. So then it creates a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety, which is probably why we see some students even having panic attacks before they go and write exams, right? Because for them, it, it means a, a huge deal, right? So it's important to reframe your thoughts. Um, I think I've spent a considerable amount of time on that to kind of tell, uh, rephrase that, you know, um, this exam is important, but you know, it, it is okay. I'm going to give my best and we'll see what happens, right? And um, also believing that you have what it takes to, to complete these exams. Uh, constantly using self-affirmations to tell yourself that, um, you know, you, you definitely have the capability to do it. Instead of falling down, falling prey for the cycle of anxiety, try to replace it with, um, a more healthy way of thinking and a more healthy way of dealing with it is, you know, kind of like breaking it down and doing one thing at a time. So that is, a, that those are really have, those have been proved to be very helpful for people dealing with um, exam stress. Thank you, ma'am. How can we identify that we are in chronic stress? Hmm. So, um, like I've said, right, uh, physic your physical uh, sensations tell you a lot. So uh, pay attention to them. You know, if you are experiencing increased digestion issues, um, you're experiencing increased blood pressure, um, or you're constantly finding yourself having, uh, experiencing panic, um, or you have muscle tension, right? Um, all of those things are indicative that you are experiencing chronic stress, and uh, it's 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 it also has a lot to do with time. If it's if it's recurring for more than six months or so, then it's not acute stress; it's become chronic, right? Um, yeah. So pay attention to your body. Yeah. How can we identify the person who is under stress? <laughs> mm. Um. Ask them. <laughs> ask them, right? Uh, I, I feel like we don't have enough conversations around how the other person's feeling. So if you, if there's something that is telling you about them, such as they're not coming to classes, um, you, you're seeing them maybe sweat a lot, or you're seeing them being scared of social situations, they're being isolated, they're not talking to anyone. Um, so be sure to check in on people around you and ask them, you know, um, is something stressing you out? Are you feeling anxious? How are you feeling is, is the overarching question to kind of get information out of people. So yeah, check it with folks more often. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, of course. And one more question we have that in this modern world, is it really possible to lead a stress-free life and kindly share us some effective strategies to, you know, uh, for stress management? What should we do immediately if we are under stress? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the answer is, uh, like I said, no one can be free of stress, right? We are, we are an organism that is in relation, we are in context with other things and other beings. So um, it's not possible to completely get rid of them, like I've kind of mentioned in the presentation as well. Um, it's, it's possible to regulate it, to manage it, and um, to, to, to deal with it and in the moment uh, anxiety especially can feel extremely intimidating right and when anxiety intensifies it becomes panic and uh, it's it, it almost feels like you're dying so um, in the moment it's it's very helpful to have your own kind of emotional toolbox is what I call it 
of people you would call immediately of your coping mechanisms such as going and drinking water or whatever works for you right listening to a song that calms you down calling your father calling your mom um whatever works for you going on a run if that's kind of what your body is feeling um and knowing that this is a temporary sensation it is going to pass right when you're in that uh, situation you might feel like this is never going to end but um knowing that it can it is temporary and it's going to pass